Hello, everybody. Uh, you're all very welcome today to this information session on applying through the CAO. My name is Colette O'Byrne. I am a school liaison officer here in DCU, and I'm delighted to have um, two of my colleagues from DCU on this session today. Um, I'll introduce you now Carol Graham, who's our admissions officer, who's actually going to be giving the presentation, and Laurence van der Hagen, who is also um, our DCU's access officer. And uh, hi, Laurence, how are you? You're on mute. How are you doing? And Carol, how are you doing? And um, so oh, we have a lot of, uh, we look like we have a, a 60, I can see here, participants um, already, which is fantastic. Um, so this session is on, um, like I said, applying to the CAO. And if it's for those of you, you know, who are Leaving Cert students, which is great, parents maybe, or guardians of Leaving Cert students. Um, it could be those of you applying to uh, the QQI uh, level five entry pathway or mature students. Um, and also it could be those of you maybe applying through DARE or HERE. Uh, so are the access access and um, entry pathway so um the just to say also if you are a mature student uh, this information session will be really useful for you but also we do have a um, an information session on our unibody platform platform which starts at five o'clock um and uh, the information session for mature students is on takes place at, at 6 30 and it will be presented by our mature student officer orla stafford and so those of you who are mature student um uh, uh, applicants might be interested in uh, going over to the unibody platform at half six to see that session and it's in channel one if you want to take note of that so you can see the chat button at the end here of the screen and um, if you have any questions at all please do ask in the chat button and we'll do our best to answer them as we go along and um, carol will present as as she will um, and then we can take questions at the end also and um, so without further ado carol it's over to yourself we'll mute ourselves here myself and laurence and uh, stop our videos and we'll pass it over to yourself now to give your presentation on applying to the CAO. So thanks very much, Carol, for that. No problem. Hold on now. So. I'll just move myself there. Right. Hi, everybody. Um, my name is Carol and I work in the admissions team in the registry. And as Colette has said, I'll be talking about the different routes into DCU and our CAO application process. The majority of our applications are obviously the through the CAO are our Leave and Search students. Um, they're the biggest group, but we also have the QQI, which are the level five progression routes from the PLC programs. Um, we also then have mature, which is anyone over 23. And then we have advanced entry, which are transfer students from other universities that are doing maybe a similar program and want to change universities and have successfully passed year one. They can get advanced entry into a similar program on our year two programs. Then, as Coletta said, we have the Here and Dare scheme, who are students from disadvantaged backgrounds or students with disabilities. And um, also there's a uni unibody presentation this evening from both um, there and here on channel two at 6.30. I thought I'd mention that. And we also then have international students, which are, they apply directly through the international office. And the closing date for that is the 1st of July. You'll see lots of information on our website. So please do go there first. Um, there's so much information available. Um, all our programs and what we offer um, to find the actual programs. If you go into the courses button here and undergraduate, it lists all our programs by faculty. So if you know wh where your program is, so like Bachelor of Education would be the Faculty of Institute of Education or Business Studies is our business school, etc. But all the information is laid out clearly in there. Um, so, for example, the jazz and contemporary music, it'll give you a breakdown through on the website of the entry requirements um, the structure to give you you know details of how the what pro or what modules are involved in that that program and also then the requirements on how or what you need to get into that program there's also a nice little button here that you can chat to current students that are doing the program so they'd be able to give you more detail on the structure and what the class is about or the program is about um, we also then have the same information on a DCU online prospectus. 
So it's like a hard copy. You can get a hard copy, but it's like a virtual copy of the prospectus and has all the details in that book. And um, again, it's broken down by faculty, <clears throat> excuse me. And there's also then summary tables actually at the back of it. So you'll see the exact requirements for that program and how many places are available on that program and the points that were for last year, 2021. Um, and you can also request that online or hard copy of that online book from student recruitment webpage. So it's handy to have. So the CAO system, I don't know whether you've already started this process, but we'd advise you to try and get going on that. It opens in November every year um, and they have um, everything is broken down here. So you just need to go into courses. And then if you want to look at the DCU programs, pick DCU here. Or if you know your program code, you can put it in here and the details will similar to the um, prospectus. It gives you the breakdown and the, the requirements for it. So it's just another way of going and finding that detail. So the Centre's Applications Office is responsible. That's where you do your application. So it opens, um, it's, I'll say, in November, and they have an early price of €30 Euros if you can apply before the 20th of January each year. They give you kind of a discount. If it's after that, then you're going to be paying um, 45 and then it closes on the 1st of February. But you can actually start your application now if you want, and then you can go back in and edit it you know, throughout the year. So there's important dates listed on the CAO application webpage, um, and you should get familiar with those. There's lots of important dates and deadlines, um, and it's a huge resource. So get familiar. I'd advise you to get familiar with the CAO um, webpage itself. All our courses are actually level eight degrees. So when you make your application, you have up to 10 choices of a level eight honors degree. Um, so you choose your your um, your programs um, in preference. OK, so when you're making this, I'd advise you to when you set up actually your CAO application, it's very important to have your own email account um, and preferably not your school one. I know a lot of people use their school because that's they think that, you know, they're in the at this stage, they're still in sixth year and you've got a school email. But just to be mindful that these results don't go out till maybe August, September um, and some schools close your school account. So you could be getting lots of information into that school email account and you've no access to it. So if you could just try and set up your own email account, if you've already set it up, you can go in and change it to an email account that you you can reg regularly check um, you don't want to be missing any information that the CAO are sending out or even later on when offers start going out the institutions will be emailing you to that account as well so you need to have access to it and also the other thing is to make sure your biographical details are correct you know the name your first name and your surname that you use that'll be used to identify you when you go to register at third level in institute institutions so you need to make sure that that detail is correct you would be surprised really how many applications are void because these details are missing and you don't get that email or you've missed a deadline something because you didn't check your email or your cao account now a lot of the emails do go to your cao account but the the email is used for the universities will definitely go straight to your email. So it's important that that's up to date and correct and that you check it. Sorry, uh, Carol, just before you continue on, somebody yeah. said that they were finding it hard to hear you. If you could maybe just speak up a tiny bit, that would be great. Thank Sorry. you. How do I do that? <laughs> it's on full, so hopefully now I'm a bit clearer. OK, so what are our entry requirements? Um, to get into DCU, you will need six Leave Insert subjects at grade eight, sorry, 06 or H7. And that has to include maths, English or Irish. We only take one, we only require one language. And you must have two H5, so two honours within that. Obviously, then there's program entry requirements that might need additional, um, additional results. So again, you need to be careful if you're applying for some of these programs, you know, make sure that you're following um, the requirements under the program you're applying for. Like science 
um, you would require a minimum of a H6 or an O3 in maths and a H5 or an O3 in a science subject like chemistry or biology or physics. And these, these are clearly listed under the programme you're interested in. The Bachelor of Ed again, DC002, you must have a H5 in three subjects and you must have a, a minimum of a H4 in Irish. You also need an O4, a H7 in maths and English. Um, entry for engineering, they require H4 in maths. So it's very important that you're checking what the requirements are for the programme you're interested in. And then also what's very important is please, please place your choices in genuine order of preference and not based on what you predict your points would be and on how you performed at your exams. This is a, an issue every year. If you are really interested in a programme and you have the, cor the correct requirements, put the course down as your first preference. We need, our, we, we find that students will panic and remove their first preference after sitting the Leaving Cert, thinking that they did badly in an exam and then realise they would have been offered that first choice afterwards. Whenever the offer or your preference you end up getting, you will never be offered a lower offer. Your offer could go up to a higher one if more places become available, but you will never be offered a lower, a lower one. So that's why you must put them in the order of true preference. I hope I spelled that out clearly. But, you know, we hear all these calls every year, students saying, you know, I wanted B Ed, but I didn't think I'd get it, so I didn't put it on my first preference. And you'll never get a lower offer. So just please put it in the preference in the order that you want your courses. So mature applications, again, this is a great way of coming into university. Um, you just have to be 23 years of age on the 1st of January of the year of entry. It's very important that you include a personal statement when you send in any documents that you think are relevant to support your application. And we find mature applicants only comp complete the bare minimum on their application because they feel they don't have enough education background and we don't require you to have leave and search, but we do expect you to put in a statement of saying why you want to apply for this course. I mean, this is the only way the programme chair will be able to assess your application, like what, what relevant experience you might have or the reasons why you want to pursue this degree. Anything you think would be relevant, put it in your personal statement. Um, it's a very, you know, it's a, it's a, we take 10% on all our programs to mature. So it's, it's um, a really good application. We'll get you that, that program that you want. Again, you can put down 10, 10 programs. You've got 10 opportunities. So, you know, you can vary it up if you're not quite sure what area you want, but there's 10 choices there, but please put in a personal statement. So how do you apply? Again, it's through the CAO. Um, the closing date is the 1st of February, so be careful of that. This is so that we can have time for the programme chairs to assess your information. Also to be aware, some of the programmes like the Bachelor of Education have to complete a supplementary form from the CAO. If you put this, that BA down as a choice, we'll do a report and we'll send you or send the CAO and they in turn will send you a form to complete that supplementary detail. Also then, if you say go for journalism, um, they also have uh, a requirement for you to produce a hard copy of an article that you got either published, like 750 words, I think it is, um, to, to be included in your application. And the deadline for that again is the 1st of February. And nursing, that's a, again a different, um, different application. You need to do an additional application and you need to contact the nursing board so you apply to the CAO, but then you also get in touch with the nursing board as they have a form you need to fill out and a whole criteria that you need to meet with them. And if you do actually then get a place on the on the DCU mature entry, there's um, a whole department there to help you, you know, to, to give you some um, extra help to make you successful. And I know um, Colette just said there that Orla Stafford my colleague there will be talking on um, channel one at 6 30 and um, so that's something you should tune into today and another big um a big application for dcu is qqi an entry route so i'm just going to take a drink there 
so the QQI application is like a PLC course. Again, we reserve 10% of our places for QQI. And um, not all programs offer it, but we do have 60 undergraduate programs now um, accepting this route. Um, so you must have, to be eligible, you must have a full QQI award with five distinctions. Some programs require a specific major award and others just require essential components. But the probably the hardest um, entry or program to get onto through this route is nursing. And uh, we find it's a very popular route that students take if they haven't got, say, the leave and search, didn't get in through the leave and search, they go back and do a fee tech through for nursing. Some of these students are getting eight distinctions and they get the max 390 FET points, they're called the further education training points. The max is 390, that's all you can get. And there's all, always far more eligible applicants than places. Um, this is, so the system, the CAO system will allocate you a random number. Um, I don't know whether you've heard about this. So you'd get your 390 and then you get a, an additional three digits random number. And if you get a high random number, you have a much better chance. But just to be aware, you know, there's a lot of applications that do come through for, for nursing to the QQI. So again, whoops, to, oh, so to apply to, sorry, I, I'm at home and I don't have my zapper. So to apply again, it's through the CC or CAO and you go down to the QQI FeeTech um, link here and you can check, this is so you can check the requirements of the program you're interested in. If you know the program code, you can put it in here. If it's DC002 or whatever code you're, or program you're interested in, or if you just want a full list, um, click on the Institute DC for D DCU, and you'll get the full list of um, all our programs that, that accept um, QQI as an entry route. So for example, um, this one here is DC001, it's education, sorry, early childhood education. So this is what I'm talking about, the major awards. For this program, they'll accept any major award and they'll accept five distinctions, any distinctions, any components within the award you're doing. So that's kind of a very general one. Whereas here, business studies and international DC110, they have specified five major programs. So you have to be doing one of these programs to be eligible. And then within that, you have to have five distinctions and one of the distinctions has to be in one of these. They're like modules within the program. So you have to have one of these modules to be eligible. And that's a formula that we've built into the CAO. If the CAO application doesn't have this for that requirement for that program, it'll just skip you, you won't get an offer. So that's why even if you've put it down and you've got your full, you know, um, five distinctions that they have to be, there has to be one, it's looking for one of those. So if you don't, it'll just skip it and not, you won't get your offer. So you need to be sure when you're doing FeeTech or QQI that you're following the proper modules and major awards if they specify it in this list. So just check that out. It's again, um, very important that you, follow that major award or components within the program, okay? And again, you just apply to the CAO. Um, closing date is the 1st of February, and I think there is a late date. There is a late date of 1st of May, but try and get your, you know, start your application. You may not have your full results. Um, as long as we know and you're on the right program and the right components, um, if you're expecting results to be later than when the CAO are ready to make offers, you'll get a conditional offer. We can see that, um, that you know, we would double check that if it's coming to the, you know, the end of the year, if you've applied for something or the CAO um, and something's missing, um, we can follow it up. So just to be sure that you've made, you know, started your application early. So this is the main CAO applications website. There's a huge amount of uh, information in here, my application and all these resources. Um, you know, just to be aware that they've there, there are lots of demos and, um, you know, help screens that, that make sure that you're 
following everything that's required to make that application. And you don't want to be missing anything um, and missing out on a, an offer just because you, you missed an email or you didn't you know, follow something. So just to be aware. Also then, there's an alert list within that, my application, application, applicant resources, there's an alert list here. So we would, um, any changes that we have, or you know, we make during the year to our publication, or it could be just a name change, it could be something simple. We would always put that in an alert list. So keep an eye on, out on that. And um, we update that regularly once the CAO system or season really starts to kick off. Like that would be one from last year, just telling you the name, you know, new degrees or new specialisms that we've um, introduced for this year. Um, so that's the alert list. Yeah, so that's um, everything I'm going to say today. I'm around for any questions that you might have, or if you prefer to email me, that's the email there, ugadmissions at dcu.ie, or you can ring me, um, and I can give you then a more detailed response to any of your questions. Okay, thank you. Hello, sorry. Yes, thank you so much, Carol. We have actually lots of questions coming in. Stephen Keogh has raised his hand. I'm going to allow him to talk now. So hold on one second. Uh, Stephen, do you want to unmute yourself? Sorry, that was actually accidental. Thanks for that. Okay, we'll raise no problem. <laughs> okay. See you then. Okay, so I'm going to go through some of the, um, the questions then, um, Carol. So yeah. just in case we have... Um, Let's see now here, Q&A, so, right. Um, okay, so this um, person is a guest, he's from Russia, and, and he really wants to ask if any, if he needs results, if, if you need results of his country exams of IELTS, or no, let's see. Hi, I'm from Russia, and I really want to ask you if I need results of my country exams of IELTS will be enough. I think that means, do you need both country exams yeah. and IELTS. Yeah, the, we always, um, if your first language is not English, you would have to have an English um, qualification to show that your what level your English is at. So yeah, again, you would just submit that with your application. Okay. Um, I think this is, you went through advanced entry. So this person is on a business course in IT Carlo, wants to apply to another business course in DCU. I'm going to complete first year, I presume in Carlo, and I don't know if it's worth applying to second year transfer to DCU or immediately again to first year. It doesn't mind doing first year again as long as I get in. <laughs> okay, start. right. So there's, we, we actually have a new process this year for advanced entry. Advanced entry is for advanced entry. So you're talking about into year two or above, mainly year two. So yeah, if you're doing something similar in a business to our business, you can definitely apply, make an application to the CAO outlining your the course you're doing you know our program chairs will be familiar with other business studies and programs and if you're very familiar if it's very similar to ours you would be offered year two if you're not then we will talk to you again and show you how to go back and you know it's the same application so you've made your application so you can go back in and um, maybe the program chair will say no you're not going to get year two what you've covered is not enough um, and we'll show you how to go back through and change your application through the CAO to be classed as a year one. But you may get exemptions if something is similar, if you've done stats that's similar to our stats, once you register for year one, um, you apply for then an exemption in that module and you, you know, you'd have less to do. Um, but there is a fee implication, just to be aware, if you're going back doing a year one again, you'd need to talk to our fees office because the HEA would have um, already pay your college in Carlo would have already claimed your tuition fee from the HEA, so they won't pay year one again. So you would be paying slightly more. Like I know with DCU, you don't pay, you know, the three thousand student contribution. They they have a different way of working that out. So um, I don't know the int the details. I don't even know if fees are talking here today, but um, you'd need to contact your fees office if you're going back to year one. There is a fee implication. Okay, certainly, great. definitely worth putting in an, um, an advanced entry. Yeah. yeah. Um, so if you're exempt from Irish, and what do you do if you're exempt from Irish and it's a requirement for your course? 
I can't imagine you'd be applying for a course if you're no, if you if you're exempt from Irish. Our general entry requirements mean that you don't need Irish. Um, so if you have an exemption, then that's okay. So, but if you were applying for an Irish co a course that needed Irish, then you wouldn't you wouldn't meet the requirements and you wouldn't be able to do it. Yeah, that would be a program entry requirement that yeah. you have to have Irish. But yeah, we own you'd have to just have your English then. Mm. It's English or Irish. You just need one. Which documents do I need to submit as a non-native English speaker? There's a lot of questions coming in about um, this. On your website, Carol, is there a, a yeah, section there is, on? Yeah, if you go through the web, um, go to admissions and in there, it'll give you non-EU, or sorry, EU, and then it gives you the English requirements. There's a, you know, we recognize a good few um, different exams. So, but if you're leaving, like you're equivalent to a leaving cert, if you're studying English, that would be acceptable if it's part of your final school report. If you've studied English, we accept that. You don't need a separate um, a qualification. But if you haven't got it, then you do need the IELTS or the mm. Cambridge, I think is another one, and mm. Duolingo, I think we accept now as well. So okay. there's a good few there. I couldn't name them all. So just go onto the website there. There's a link there to the English requirements. Uh, and that website is www.dcu.ie forward slash registry or E G I S T R Y registry. And there is on the side panel there a, a section that you can submit a query, which is great. Um, if you have yeah. a, a, another question there. Um, do first time CO applicants need to submit anything other than the choice on, their, on, the, on the website? Um, so you have your, your course choices, but you might actually have to submit uh, maybe other documents, supplementary documents at all, uh, if you're ticking no, a certain for, box, no? Yeah, for leave and search, you would just say that if you're current Irish leave and search, um, we have access then to the, the results from the department. So that's all you need to be putting in for a straightforward leave and search or FETAC again, you just make sure you're putting in your exam number that links you to that application. Mm -hmm. okay great uh do we do russian i think it's do you understand russian at university um so it's not one of our languages um french german spanish chinese or japanese are the languages that were are taught at dcu if that is your question and uh, my query is if there are programs that accept major awards not for application but in lieu of say first year my query is if there are programs that accept major awards not for application but in lieu of say first year i actually don't understand that question oh. so maybe you might email us on student help at dcu.ie um, if you if, to maybe um flesh out that oh. question that you have there um desi um okay so the irish is again that one there um I, i'm confused on what sort of documents need to be uploaded um passports grade transcripts cv not, well, it depends what the application is. Yeah. If it's just leave and search, you don't need to upload anything. And um, then depending if it's QQI, obviously your QQI results. And um, if it's mature, you would just follow that application up with your statement and anything that you think is relevant. If you have done a previous course, it doesn't matter what level, just anything that shows that you, you've studied and um, you know that you're interested in that programme. I, I don't think you can go wrong on the CAO, um, Carol. You know, if you're if you've ticked, say QQI, they'll ask you for something. You can't go any further without giving that information. Would I be right? Yeah. Well, yeah. It'll it the QQI would be one tick. A mature. Make sure you tick in the mature route as well. Mm. Um, I do think it it pulls from your age as well, and it may just email you saying you know you didn't submit or. Mm just to follow up your application because you're mature yeah. and just be careful of the deadlines that, you know, different entry routes have different deadlines. Right. Because uh, a mature applicant is 23 um, on the 1st of January in the year of entry. So 23 or more, 1st of January in the year of entry. When does campus accommodation open for registration? Um, OK, so this is not a, a, an application query, but when does campus accommodation open for registration? I believe on their website, it says the 1st of February. Uh, is a deposit refundable if you don't get your course? Yes, it is refundable. OK, um, so hello, everyone. Good evening. Thank you for this form. My first question is if we can add more courses after we have already submitted our applications which is yes you can well, change you it ten, around yeah you have 10 level we only do level eight so you've only 10 choices but you've also 10 10 choices at level seven some of the other universities do level seven so it's a good option mm -hmm. but yeah 10 on um level eight but you can change your mind um later right. the, you know but you right, right up until the first of july you can yeah. change your mind so but that's so what you, i'm saying be very careful don't change mm. because you think you did badly in, in an exam mm. just put it in the order of preference you can't go wrong then 
Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. So if you put something as your number one, two, three, um, and you really think about it uh, and you want to change your mind, you can absolutely do that right up until the 1st of July. Uh, my second question is, considering that applications through the CAO take until May uh, before one is certain, how about scholarship opportunities for people who apply to this route, please? Uh, I mean, like the, I know, I don't know if you're talking about what, what scholarships you're talking about. I know our sports scholarships, the closing date is the 1st of May. So I'm sure they will be in touch with you separately about that. But I don't know what other scholarships you're talking about there because yeah, we don't we really. Don't, we only we have an education yeah. scholarship, which is based on your points. And yeah. then the sports, as you say, you can start that application. Um, you're just in, you know, there's a form. It'll be actually opening on the 1st of February. So you apply for the sports scholarship or the reduced points um, for the sports if you're playing at county level. There's a whole mm -hmm. um, requirement there, but definitely put it in. And then it, it doesn't come to play till um, the results go out, the leave and search. You may mm -hmm. get additional points to get you onto the program you want. So it's definitely, if you're a sports person, it's definitely yeah. worth doing. This could be an international uh, student query um, for the scholarships. And if it is, then the people to ask are the international office. So just go to their website. So dcu.ie forward slash international and the contact details of the international recruitment officers are there and they will be more than happy to help you out with that query. Um, so the next one then is I, I have a bachelor degree again in my university. It's quite hard to get the academic transcript before the 1st of February. This is an international student. I also have the academic transcript from my high school. I intend to take the bachelor degree as a mature student. So my question is, is there any chance I could submit all other paper but university academics transcript until the 20th of February? Yeah, so, submit anything you have. Um, if you're eligible or, the, you know, the, anyone that's assessing that can make you say that you, you would be eligible and give you a conditional offer. Mm -hmm. And that conditional offer will hold your place till you can get in the, the proper documentation. And, and if you are an international student, then you're applying directly to directly DCU. To the, yeah. um, so it's not, you don't be, you're not applying to the CAO. No. So if you are TANVO, an international student, you do not apply to the CAO. All international students apply directly to, to DCU. And again, I would recommend that you go to our international website to talk to somebody very quickly there as well if you can and um, again the students from russia want to study genetics what is the application and entrance requirements what studies do i need to pass for final exams i think this is the question they should apply you know just uh, email yeah, us directly email on that too much involved it's, it's, yeah so um <laughs> if you can maybe email student help all one word at dcu.ie and then we'll we'll be able to uh, you know again it could be, you could go to the registry office and, and put in a query there as well also um but we won't apply um when applying to the VTAC course uh, route once you have a central component list for the course how can you find out what facilities offer those courses uh, really it's a matter you're going to have to really do it yourself and um, the, ma the, the major further yeah, education cities, colleges yeah. will offer those um will offer all the, the, the awards that you know the major awards that you're looking for so maybe again you can check you know just check their websites of the of the further education colleges and it really depends where you live as well so i can't even tell you where to go for that but um do make sure that the awards that you're doing for the fetac route matches the awards that we are looking for here in dcu okay if you want to use that as an entry pathway um put out the telephone number again did you put a telephone number out uh, carol um, sorry, the main DCU, or sorry, registry is 700-5338. Probably better to email. Yeah, email on ugadmissions at dcu.ie. So that's U, UG for undergrad, for undergrad U, yeah. ugadmissions at, an S, yeah, at admissions at dcu.ie. DCU .ie. Um, so, or, or just go into the registry website. So that's dcu.ie forward slash registry, and you'll find those details there. Is there another pathway into DCU to get into the B-Ed primary school teaching through leaving search? Um, no, the, that, you no. see where that goes through the teaching council where, you know, they set all the requirements um, and you have to have, no matter where you do that B-Ed, you have to have those entry requirements. So you have to have your Irish, Irish. and the three, um, higher subjects and the maths and the English. The only thing is like if you do, and the points as well, you have to have the points and as you know, points are gone crazy. But say if you did a really good leaving set, but you didn't get that honor in or the H4, whatever in Irish, mm -hmm. you can redo that exam in another, you know, do a leaving cert subject again for matriculation. So we'll accept that for your entry requirements, but your points will still be based on that first sitting when you sat your your full leaving cert. Mm -hmm. That's a great way to do it. So yeah, basically, if you did get the points for the B.Ed., say, for example, but you didn't get the Irish, 
you can just sit the Irish exam again and use your points from that sitting. Okay, that's really good. Somebody asked about deferring. When will they hear about deferring if they applied as a, a, um, if they got their place, if they deferred last year they, and they applied to the CEO again? Oh, we'd be they, in touch. Yeah, yeah, we write to you. Anyone that, that you would have got an email to confirm that you got the deferral, we'll write to you then to say, are you coming back? You had to make it, you have to, if you're a CAO applicant that deferred, you have to make a new application to the CAO and put only that program that you got. So that's one of the stipulations. So if you deferred your Bachelor of Education, you make a new application through the CAO and you just put that um, only that one program down that you deferred and you'll automatically get your place. It won't be based on points. There's a, a box you tick to say you deferred. So make sure you tick that when you do your application and only put that program that you defer down if you put a few in you're kind of hedging your bets and your deferral is void mm -hmm. but you could still get an offer if you've made the points for this year so mm -hmm. but if if you know you if that's the program you want um put, you it put in. that as your one and only option yeah basically and um, sports scholarships open on the uh, they close actually the closing day for sports scholarships is the first of may um, and yeah. somebody asked that as well um so this person is uh, from nigeria and interested in starting a nursing program in dcu so if you are, you have to apply as, even though you're a, an international student, you do apply to the CAO. Sorry, yeah, that's the only program that we do. You go to the nursing board and um, you have to make an application to them and you make a CAO application mm. for nursing. It's, it's, it's the only one that we do it mm. that way for international. So just to say that if you are an international student and you want to apply for nursing in DCU, you have to apply to the CAO. Um, okay, uh, confused here. Um, I, I did my leaving search in 2004, currently resitting maths, English and Irish. Is this enough to apply as a mature student? I'm also awaiting a QQI level five in maths, looking to do primary teaching. Um, yeah, mm -hmm. mature the primary teaching, you can apply as a mature student once you again meet the 23 requirement of January. Um, you do have to have, again, it's set down by the teaching council. So you do have to have that Irish requirement. Yeah, so they, they, they're resetting maths, English and Irish, which seem yeah. to be the main uh, subjects for that course anyway. Um, so definitely make your application. Definitely make your application. You would get um, the actually the timings, the results or the offers go out for, depending on the, the route you're, you're applying through. So the matures are around A, so it's earlier than the leave insert. It's usually early July. And the QQI is round zero, which is early August. Again, it's separate. And then round one is the normal leave insert. So say for that mature, if you're sat, you know, early July, you won't have had your leave insert. So you, if you're eligible, you'll get a conditional offer saying that you've got your place on condition that you've got the entry requirements of the Irish or whatever that might be outstanding. Mm -hmm. So just to be mindful of that, um, there are condition offers if you're on the earlier rounds. And Glenn, also, you should um, talk to our mature student officer, Orla Stafford. Uh, we mentioned that she's on UniBuddy at half six, um, giving an information session, but you can have a chat to her directly there, or else just contact her directly in DCU. That's Orla.Stafford, S-T-A-F-F-O-R-D, at dcu.ie. Um, I have, in a previous email conversation, received inconsistent answers of applying to DCU Connected as an EU student. Do I have to apply to CAO or directly to DCU when application process is open? And DCU Connect is our distance course. So that's yes. directly with, um, it's nothing to do with CAO. Nothing. You're doing, it's a distance ed program. So you just contact um, the DCU team, DCU Connected team. Yeah, they're getting non-consistent answers. Maybe, um, okay, so maybe uh, if you uh, uh, email Anna, just email us there at studenthelp at dcu.ie and we can follow up for you to see what's going on there for you. Okay, so that's studenthelp at dcu.ie um, and we'll have, we'll have a look there for you. Uh, when will those applying to a deferred course find out if they've accepted, you've answered that already. Um, I'm sorry, I don't understand. So just to be clear, yeah, they, they, you don't, you're not going to be accepted. You, you have to meet that requirement. You make your, if you're a CAO deferral, that you, you follow that rule. You only apply for that one program, and um, you, you know, make CAO, CAO application and put that one down. If you're, I don't, you're not talking about um, just a general deferral. If you've started, if you start a DCU and a month in you decided you know, for medical reasons or whatever you deferred, that's a different deferral. You don't need to, if you, once you've registered, that's a deferral through registry. So you contact registry, don't go near the CAO. So there's two different deferrals there. So it depends on what you did. Did you defer before you registered? 
like you might have accepted your place, but you never went through the registration and got a username and password, then it's CAO. But if once you've done the registration with DCU, you got your username and password, you got a DCU deferral and you need to contact registry. Mm -hmm. We'll contact you anyway, but there'd be no harm even just emailing UG admissions to make sure that that is the case that you were deferred. You know, mm -hmm. it'd be too late to come back to us in September and mm -hmm. we find out something didn't um, yeah. get processed. And if you're still having um, confusion about that, just again, email us on studenthelp.dcu.ie and we'll, we'll sort you out. I just saw a question there in another uh, chat box. Um, uh, do you apply to the CAO for PLC courses? And no, the answer would be no. You'd, you'd apply through uh, the Further Education College, wouldn't you? Yeah. yeah. OK, so you apply for PLC courses, which are QQI level five courses. You apply to the relevant co college that is offering it. Yeah, and um, that can be a later yeah. application. So say if you got your leave insert and you didn't get the course you want, then you can go looking at the PLC course. Like for science, it's a really good option. If you didn't get the, you want science and you want the genetics or something and you didn't get it go to this the plc course do a program there they take 10 percent if you've done very well and um, it's a re really good option to get you know the basics in physics and chemistry and biology you know some people don't do that in their leave insert and they come in and then they're hit with these you know modules that they have had no exposure to so don't dis um a plc course it's a really really good option Okay, great. Um, another language, English language. Uh, do you accept Duolingo English tests or only IELTS? No, we uh, do. Yeah, I think it's you have to have a hundred, an average of a hundred on it. And again, you'll see that on the registry website. Yeah. Um, English qualification that includes IELTS. Yes. What if my I, I do? Am I saying this right? IELTS. IELTS, yes. IELTS overall score score is six point five, but in reading I have five point five, and reading reading part, listening is listening in seven listening is a 7.5 is it enough yeah I does it i don't know i can't think that offhand i mean it does give you a breakdown you do mm -hmm. have to have an average i think of six and then an overall it could be 6.5 i can't don't quote me on that it is on the website though but yeah we do but the, if you've done english in your leave insert that would be enough you know this is, a, this, is a, this is an international student i believe oh, so, oh, yeah, yeah 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 then they do so, need to have that yeah check the, ch the check the website I, I haven't got it there to okay have, um if i'm from an non eu country what would i need to apply to nursing i also have english for two years so you need to meet the entry requirements and you apply to the cao um, so and the nursing board and the nursing board. Um, so the entry requirements for nursing are a science subject as well as some level of maths as well, I think. Um, yeah, again, I, I, sorry, they studied English here. Was that uh, like studied through English? Was yeah, it I also have English for two years. I don't know. I, I, OK, yeah. So again, because if, again to... if you're non EU and you've done the QQI, the PLC course, you can apply that way. You know, you've been studying here, you've obviously been living here. So that mm -hmm. that's that again, just make sure you're ticking when you're making that application to the mm -hmm. CAO for nursing mm -hmm. that you're um that you've done a QQI or well that's if they have. I'm I'm not sure yeah. sure yeah, they, sorry, they, yeah. it's quite vague. Um yeah, yeah, I yeah, I'll send a link of this recording to everybody, okay? So if somebody's asking that question as well. Um Okay, so Alvaro, how can I convert my grades in Spain to the grades requirement of DCU? Is our grade converter available for EU students? There is, yeah. Um, the, on the CAO website, the easiest way to get to it is to, or even just search in Google, CAO EU, and you'll get a document and that breaks down how you convert your qualification into the equivalent kind of points and what's the you know the requirements so it's a really good document it, it steps it all out for you there and it gives you all the english um requirements as well you know what what english level you have to be at so just mm -hmm. search eu qual um cao eu qual and it's a document there Okay, great. Um, I had said uh, an answer to a student, a student um, when will they get their results? When will they know if they've been accepted? So if this is a normal Leaving Cert student, when the CAO, when the exam results come out in August, we don't have a date yet, do we? Uh, no, the department still hasn't uh, given the CAO a date, so we don't know for Leaving Cert when that will be. Okay, but then usually um, it would be a few days later that they would get an offer if they got an offer. And I said, I mentioned that all those dates, those key dates will be on the CAO website, so just to check back, back that in again. So, um, and you mentioned already, so I'm presuming that that's a Leaving Cert student asked that question. Uh, so that will be August, but you also said that uh, matures might get it in early 
July. Yeah, they, because the matures is nothing to, we're not waiting on the Department of mm -hmm. Education. Yeah, that's early July. The matures are the first round and then, or not first round, what should mm -hmm. I call them? Round um, A is the, mm -hmm. the first results out in early July. And then, and then the QQI, QQI is early August. Early August, okay. And then the leaving cert are made to be confirmed. Usually if to you be go confirmed. into that um, CAO calendar, everything is to be confirmed. So there's, they've no dates yet from the Department of Education. Okay, so Ellie is saying here, if I do a PLC in primary school teaching post-primary, can I apply to teaching in DCU? So you can't, there's no entry pathway no. from um, a, PL, a PLC course into primary teaching, but you could get into post-primary teaching. Um, and all the information is on the website there. So on the CAO website, um, the PLC course that you would need to do to get into post-primary teaching. But again, you need to know a post-primary teaching course that you want also. So, you know, there's a number of, of post-primary teaching courses you can do. Um, is there a PLC course into business studies? Yes, there is. There's a few. There's about few. Five, five different awards that you can do. Yeah. Um, again, that's on the CAO website. If you just, the code for business studies is DC111. And if you just put that into the QQI uh, PLC finder, they'll, they'll, that'll show you all those awards for, for business studies. Um, the student from Italy, a bit confused on when we will know if they're accepted from Italy. Again, you're applying to the CAO, so it's again, it's August. It's yeah, later. even though you're EU applicant with um, an EU qual or leave and cert equivalent, your, your offers go out with our leave and cert, so it's the same. And unfortunately, last year was very late, so, so a lot of students didn't, you know, wait for their offer. They took whatever offer they got elsewhere, either be in their country, their own country. Mm -hmm. um, we're very, we're much later, so it mm -hmm. is a concern. Yeah, you'll be, be with the leave and search. Is there advanced entry into psychology courses, um, Carol? No, 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 no so the answer, there. There's, yeah. there's no transfer into psychology courses that answered that question. Uh, somebody has a postgraduate query again, but this is just undergraduate at the moment. So, and I know you're international as well. So, definitely look at uh, looking at the international, the contacts there, the international officers will be able to help you out with your query. Um, so that's Akram uh, from Morocco. Um, what specific foundation course should I do? I live in Dublin. Is there a specific college uh, foundation for this course? Sorry, I don't know what course that was. Um, Yasmin, you might tell me. Um, I'm from Spain. I don't really know what, how this works. Once I apply to UCL, what do I need to do next? Well, that's again an EU quad. So you make your application to the CAO and then you send all your documents to the CAO office in Galway. Um, and if we'll assess that separately, um, but your offer goes out with leave and search. So it's the same application, but you just need to send your documentation yourself to the CAO office in, the, in Galway. If a student has passed the IELTS uh, exam in Russia, do they need to do it again and here? Well, as long as it's within two years, I think we accept it up to two years. Okay, so two years. It has to be relevant and yeah, recent. Yeah. Okay, it has to be recent. So uh, a recent uh, English language test within the last two years. Um, if you've completed a level seven, will this help in getting a place for level eight as a mature student? Certainly yeah, will. absolutely. Yeah. Everything will stand to you. Mm -hmm. Now, we don't, if you've done a level seven, we don't do a conversion to a level eight. I mean, some people do ask that. So where you do an additional year, we don't do that here. So, no. but a level seven, again, it depends how long ago. it'll always stand to you, but it just be careful if it's within five years since you've done it. Um, the HA might not be a fee implication. They won't pay twice for a, a degree within a certain time. It could be five or eight years even. Um, so that would be the only thing I would say, but definitely stands to you, yeah. Yeah, absolutely. Um, is it free to change your courses after you apply to the CAO? It'll be free from the 5th of May. Between the 5th of May and the 1st of July, that's when the free period kicks in. OK, um, so that's that. Uh, does the CAO prior prioritise someone who has put a course down as number one versus someone who had the course as number four, as they both have the same points? No, yeah. Uh, that's I don't know. See, it's a system thing. I th mm -hmm. It's based on your point, your points for that program. I mean, the points are made. Th um, we don't Dep set the points. Yeah, but well, depend if that person who has a number four had a higher offer of something it, on be one, based two, three on the points. Yeah, yeah it'd be based on the points, and if they didn't get an offer elsewhere, yeah. and the points are so like an example of the points. So if there's forty places on a program. This, we tell the system, the CAO system, what the requirements are. If it's just general requirements, so there's 40 places available. The system sees that 40 people have applied. It goes down to the 40th person and it draws a line. And that's whatever that 40th person point.
points are, that's deemed the points that we set. Like we don't set them, it's, it's purely based on how many places are available on that program. And the last person in, they draw a line and that's what makes the points that you see. Mm. But that fluctuates because it depends. So don't be going, don't get hung up about points. It's really on preference. Put it in order the preference. Don't be trying to gauge mm. whether well, the points were 400 last year. There, will they be 450? We can't tell you that. And again, last year, the points were um, overrated because it was all predictive. There was a lot of predicted grades and it inflated our the points. So hopefully that won't be the case this year and points will won't be as high yeah but yeah don't get hung up in that just put down in preference of what you want um, and it'll, you'll find your level absolutely it's a good question though i don't it, it is based on your point the points that it is got. based on your points yeah um so if i don't don't get the points required for mint how do i place a plc option in the cao as my top choice for level six seven so it's not a, a plc is a level five and you apply directly to the college of further education and um, the further education college that um that uh, facilitates that PLC course. So you don't apply to the, C to the CAO for a level five. Um, so that answers that question. Um, can I hear more about the Japanese course? Um, that's, that's uh, I don't know. That would be- the, That would be applied yeah. language and translation studies perhaps, where you would choose two, um, two languages at intermediate level or one at intermediate and one beginner level. So you could choose Japanese at beginner level and then in year three, you can go to Japan for a year to study through Japan for the year. Um, that's our Business Studies International also offers Japan, Japanese as a, as a choice as well. So Business Studies International. So to get into that course, you'd need at least a H4 of any language other than English or Irish to get onto the course. And then you can take up Japanese as a beginner um, in your year one. And that's Business Studies International. So there's two courses in DCU that offer Japanese as an option. OK, is there an easy way to check UQI entry into DCU on the CAO? Um, CAO, um, there's actually a PDF there. It's really nice easy to glance at. So if you go onto the CAO website and go into QQI on the sidebar, and then you'll see, um, just choose DCU as the college that you want to see all the QQI entry pathways and a nice PDF pops up, pops up with all the DCU courses that offer QQI. Um, so that's a nice, easy way to look at it. Um, sorry again, I'm asking about the transfer to second year again. What chair officer would I have to phone or email? That's later on, isn't it? That wouldn't be yeah, sorry, which program? It doesn't say so I, I think this person is a bit confused um i you know what I, because we don't know your exact circumstances and um, this is anonymous uh, so i don't even have your name here you might just email student help at dcu.ie and we can just talk you through it i might give you a shout you know if you want to email me um on student help at dcu and then i'll give you a, a call and we can talk through it it might be a little bit better than uh, than this form okay um let's see now yeah, Amy, I deferred my course last year. Do I request a new CAO number or use my last year CAO number when I'm applying? No, you apply again and you'll get a new CAO number. Yeah, but just put that one program down. Just the one. Amy, I think yeah. I've answered this question already with you, Amy. So you just uh, put the, the course you deferred last year, you put it as your one and only option on your CAO this year. So you have to apply to the CAO again, putting that one course only on your CAO if that's the course that you want. OK, so that will give you a new CAO number. All right. Uh, should students have received their exam numbers by now? Are they needed for the CAO process? I'm What's not that sure. Now? That's a CAO. That's... I, yeah, when you the when you're school. doing the leaving cert, yeah, you'd have to check with your school when they're they're due. Everything yeah. is delayed. I, I, I don't know. Um, but yeah, make sure when you do get that exam number, you do link it to your CAO application. Yeah, um, so your school will answer that question. Uh, Brian, any idea what the points ranges are likely for the new courses? We won't know until August, like everybody else, unfortunately. And we have to wait and see what's going to happen as well, because we don't even know if it's going to be a combination of predictive and uh, exams. So we none of us even know that yet. So and unfortunately, again, we have no idea. We have no way of knowing until we draw that line. If there's 40 places, as I say, we don't make those points up. Yes, yeah. it's based on the number of places and the last person in the door. 
Yeah. Is there a music scholarship? No, there isn't, um, unfortunately. Um, if you do a mod module or two through DCU Connected and decide to apply to, to do a full time course next year, would it mean there will be a subject that you don't have to do in the first year? I can answer that because I did it myself. Yes, <laughs> I did a master's with DCU Connected. So I, the first thing I did was a single module. And that meant then that was done and dusted. So I just had to continue on with the other modules. And I'm sure that's the same for undergraduate as well. OK, um, I'm interested in P teaching and biology. I don't think I'll get the points. Is there a backdoor for this course? Yes, there's a PLC course um, into PE and biology uh, from entry 2022. Um, I really wish to do psych, psych nursing as a mature student. Can someone advise me on how to apply to, uh, for the CAO? Um, again, Orla Stafford is your best person there. She's a talk on a half six on channel one in UniBuddy, and she'll be able to talk you through that. Or else just contact her directly, orla.stafford at dcu.ie, and she'll help you out. Um, with, or even just contact the School of Nursing as well. They might be able to help you as well. Uh, the co course code DC345, which is, looks like it's this, uh, this person again from for DC Connected, psychology major via online distance learning. This, the entry to this course is closed now. What when can I apply for this course? Is it really? I don't think I don't think it's I don't think it's opened even up for this year. Do you know that? I don't, I don't think so. Either, I don't think yeah. they open up until April, to tell you the truth. Yeah. If I remember correctly from last it's definitely year. Definitely not closed anyway. No, it's not closed. Not it wouldn't be September, no. No, it wouldn't be closed. Um I studied QQI level five business and finance, and I'm currently attending QQI level six finance at Whitehall. Do I need IELTS? This is an international student, so it's obviously yeah. living here in Ireland and doing these yeah, courses. Do. Well, no, because you're studying through English. That's different. If you're here studying through English, we wouldn't check your English requirement if you're doing QQI. OK, if I've passed the IELTS exam, do I need to pass the exam in Ireland? That, no. Again, that's only if it's current. We mentioned yeah, that it's, exactly. if it's the last two years, I believe. Yeah. Again, that will be on our website. Do we need to do we have to fill in the courses in the CAO by Thursday 20 or just have made an application or an account, as you say, by then? Yeah. Yes. Emer. Just get, yeah, just get, get your get name. discount, get it up and start it. Yeah, yeah. because like we mentioned that, you know, you really don't have to have your courses by the, until the 1st of July. Yeah. So you have all that time to do that. So, yeah, just get your account set up. That'll be great. Um, does DCU offer any funded um, scholarships? Um, I don't know if you're international or not, and there might be some international ones for undergraduates. Um, again, if you look at their website, you'll see that. I actually looked today and there are some there, but there isn't any for, um, you know, if you are just a, an Irish student, there isn't a fully funded scholarship for, for DCU. Um, I'm above 23. Am I on the right path, please? As a mature student, yes, you are indeed. Uh, when will European students get their choices? They'll get them. So Roisin, um, it, yeah, again, it's, it's August. It's like it's with the other other students. At, you know, you're applying to the CAO, so it means that you have to wait until those results come out. We don't know that date yet. Um, and so, so we assess them. Your your qualification, your EU qualification, we look at that and assess it and convert it into the equivalent points on the Irish. So then you go in with the, everyone else for the, the, you know, that place on the um, the program. So your results, the offers go out with the Leaving Cert. Yeah, uh, my parents and I are both European and are citizens of the EU. We've been living outside of Europe for the past five years. Would I still be considered as an EU resident in my application? That's a fee. Like we base your application, your application is based on where you've done your secondary schooling. So that's if you're in Europe, you apply to the CAO. If for fee related question, it's, it's a whole different story. You need to get mm -hmm. onto fees. Mm -hmm. You have to be resident in an EU country, I think three out of the five years. Yeah. There's a whole... Um, Even if you are a passport, I don't know what you see. We, we're not, we're yeah. not, um, Volin, who asked that question, really, we, we're not experts in that area at all. And yeah. that would be a fees a finance It's a fee um, calculator thing that there is, on yeah. the fees website. But yeah, your, your application, if you've done your secondary schooling in an EU country, you go to the CAO. Then you, it's a case of talking to fees and getting them to assess your fee part of it. Um, Ariane, I've checked the DCA website to convert my British British A level grades into CAO points, but I don't have it really clear as I have done my exams in different years. Can I contact anyone for this registry? Yeah, yeah, Red, yeah. The under, UG, UG admissions. UG admissions. Yeah. So I'm UG trying admissions. to include as much information if you've done AS or A, you know, A stars. Give us all your information. We can try and calculate it again. It, actually, in the EU document that I said, if you search CAO EU, there's a breakdown of the um, United Kingdom and all their how they um, calculate the conversion into uh, um, 
yeah. Irish points. Okay, great. Uh, yeah, but email me and I'll have a look. Yeah, good stuff. And um, there's no talks this evening on primary teaching. Now that's in the Q and A. There's a load more questions in the chat. Um, so I don't know if we have a uh, time to go through all these now or not. Um, because let's have a look here now. Uh, the chat function is that the same? The chat function is the same, I believe. Is it? I think I've gone through everything here now. So that was sixty-five questions and asked answered so i want to be able to put in actually um if i can just put in some emails that people yeah. um let me see here now how do we do this uh me 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 i want to put in a attendees and oh gosh i'm totally confused here now hold on a second oh my god i'm in the dark as well it was good. the questions were covering hi everybody i'm still here in the dark um i didn't actually realize that um so let's see here now if i can just uh put something in the chat box um, to everyone, student help at dcu.ie. That's uh, if you have any questions to me, I can answer answer those. Student help at dcu.ie. UG admissions yep. at dcu.ie for Carol. UG admissions. Just that's yep. okay. Yeah, that's right. Yeah. Um, Ron, so you're okay there. <laughs> you want to answer? Yeah. No, I just wanted to to add uh, some some students were asking about primary school teaching. And I'm organizing actually a, an information evening in March uh, on teaching a, every teaching course that we do in DCU in the, the community, but I think everybody would be very welcome. So I'm going to put my um, my email in the chats as well for, for people to email me their interest and I'll send them the link. Excellent. Excellent. That sounds great. Thanks very much, Laurence. Um, so that's a, an information session on teaching and it's not just relevant to access or here. Yeah, no, it'll be for anyone. Interested. It's for anybody who's interested in teaching. Brilliant. Okay. Anybody else? Um, oh, look, there's, did you answer that? How do I apply to the DARE or HERE scheme through CAO? Ha Hannah, I see that question there. Yeah. So, uh, well, basically you do this on the, on the CAO, you will be asked the question if you want to apply for HERE or DARE. So if you want to apply for HERE, you will tick that box equally uh, for, for DARE. And then there is a, there is a separate... Um, application online that has to be completed um, by the 1st of March. So you have an extra month to do it online and then you will need to, um, to send um, a checklist of documentation before the 15th of March. Basically, that's the way it works. But our advice would be to, to do it as soon as possible, not to wait until, until March. It has to be done now really because it takes quite a while to get the documentation from the various, um, from, from the social welfare or you know revenue um so yeah so really it's vital to get those documentation in but to make sure they start the process now so they get them in on time yeah um i don't know if there's, uh, there's a one from vanessa here will peer support program for mental health be talked about at the unibody talk tonight i don't know about that one vanessa myself uh peer support program for mental health no um unless that's I, I, you might be talking vanessa about dcu supports um so which are absolutely all there for everybody uh, to take up on so if you are having a challenging time at all then you just need to go to our student support and development and um absolutely we'll help you out there if that's what you're saying vanessa i'm not too sure of your question um so somebody that what was the appropriate study for dubbing is there a scholarship is there a scholarship for audio engineering um not elka that's your question but i can't think of a there isn't an actual course for audio engineering but you could do maybe multimedia um that could maybe verge on that or maybe electronic and computer engineering that could be something to do there you'd have to have a look at the the website to see the subjects that are on offer in there so that could be a course for you as well um so how do I how will I know if CAO received my application? Do I have to press a submit button or will it just be uploaded after the 1st of February? Or oh, you need to press your submit button. Yeah. Yeah, you'll get confirmation from them. So again, check that email, make sure you have the right email and check the CA. Once you create a CAO account, you can, you know, they the CAO will um, keep a copy of the email in your account and you can check its progress. But yeah, you, you, you won't get any confirmation if you haven't clicked and finished your application. Yeah, yeah, and I actually was at a session there on Seth earlier on, and they said they sent a statement of application um, before the end of May. So, yeah. Okay, brilliant. Um, uh, I think we've answered around about 70 odd questions there. I hope everybody got the answer, but now you know you do have our emails there. Um, so, if I did miss anybody, I'm absolutely very sorry about that. But 
if you do have a question or if you weren't, if you were confused as to the answer we gave, uh, you might email studenthelp at dcu.ie. And I hope that uh, the information, Carol, thank you so much for all your information there. Thank you, Laurence, for being here on hand to, to help out as well and give that information also and for that information on the uh, teaching um, session that you're holding soon. So listen, we're going to leave it there. And this recording was uh, recorded. So we'll send it on uh, to people so you can have a look back if you wish. OK, so I'm going to say goodbye now. Good evening. Thank and you. hopefully you'll all go into the Unibuddy uh, platform now to, to, to have a look at the talk. So thanks yeah, so some much. Some great everybody. talks lined up. So yeah, yeah, great opportunity to hear yeah. all about the yeah. programs. Yeah. OK, good stuff. All right, everybody. Thanks, Megan. We're going to leave it there. See bye -bye. you now. Bye bye. Bye bye. bye, -bye.